draw some interest. What about you? Did you did you want to fight here in Chicago, or is it, or is it does it bring some challenges with it that maybe you didn't want? Jeez, I mean, a fist fight in Cleveland is to me no different than a fist fight in Chicago. There's a little bit added pressure, uh, but you know, I I wanted to get one in before I ever fought in Chicago. But this comes up, you know, I don't know. They do cards here once a year, if that, at best. And uh, you know, Duke advised me. He's like, you can't say no to that. So here we are. No, the decision not to work out today. I got to ask. I think everybody in the world wanted to see see you on the mat, see you hitting pads. You'll know, see how the game for it. Yeah, how much strategy was in there? I know you said it was a scheduling thing, but how much strategy was it to say we we got to keep this under wraps? Uh, it's a scheduling thing, um, and it's an anxiety thing. I, I got I got severe anxiety, and I, I you know I'm, I'm comfortable in the gym, obviously, uh, and I'm just I, I just I don't like people. Like, if I was training and somebody walked in and started watching, I wouldn't know and I'd be fine with it. It's, it's whatever. But um, as weird as it sounds, like, I'll, I'll be fine fighting. But just the, the training, it's just, I don't know, I got, I got I'm, I'm like a, a weirdo. I was going to say, how's it different? I, mean, I don't know, it just is. And given that you just pro wrestling in so many different yeah. cities for so many different years. You I know, know, wrestling in front of hundreds of thousands of people in my underwear. But it's, <laughs> it's, just, it's just different. I have anxiety. That's a that's a it's a thing that you know. I mean, I don't I don't go to I don't I barely go to punk shows anymore, you know, because like being in a crowd of people, I'm just kind of like uh, this is starting to freak me out. Now that I'm talking about it, like uh, you know, um, you know, Duke Duke wasn't here too, and it, it's just it's it's more or less. I, I definitely want to get one in with my team in a little bit, you know, like right at nine when I'm scheduled to fight. Is anxiety something you deal with in day to day life? With a lot of different things. Yeah, unfortunately, it is. And I, I think uh, I think I can tell when I know I'm anxious or my wife is because it, it's amplified via our dog Larry. But when he's freaking out, I kind of step back and I go, "Oh yeah, I, I, I probably gotta I probably gotta calm down and work on something." How, how concerned were you that the trial was going to impact what's happening this week? Uh, I mean, I was more concerned that the trial was going to impact my life and my, my wife's life, you know, and it, and it did. Uh, and I just try to find positive ways that it, it impacted it. You know, it made me more hyper-focused on the fight, believe it or not. It made me more um, conscious of every minute of every day to wake up and train, to go take care of business in court, uh, to to spend after hours with my lawyers to go back home to train again. Uh, it was difficult, but it, it was easy because I could compartmentalize it enough and, and it was what I needed to do to get to this point. So at, at Saturday, I know I, I, I did all the hard work. Have you gotten any messages of encouragement from Duncan Keith or any other friends on Blackhawks leading up to this fight? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, I, you know, the, a lot of them aren't super huge MMA fans, you know what I mean? So uh, I, I haven't gotten... I'm sad now. I didn't get a message. <laughs> Maybe I will now. No, I, I haven't. Uh, I, they're, they're busy doing their own thing, you know, and they, they're hopefully enjoying some, some downtime. There's a lot of tired legs on that team, so hopefully they're, they're enjoying themselves. Do you expect them to bounce back next year? I do expect them to bounce back next year, just like I expect myself to bounce back on Saturday. What do you make of the way Mike Jackson promoted this fight? Doesn't want to call you CM Punk. It's kind of talks to smack a little bit. Uh, he doesn't want to call me CM Punk. Only wants to call you Phil Brooks. Cool. Um, uh, I just, I, I don't know. I don't pay attention to it. And I, I think um, the people, the fans who are angry that people call me CM Punk or I use the name CM Punk are the same ones who couldn't tell you what Crow Cop's real name is that call a man Korean zombie and they refer to Quentin Jackson as Rampage. So what the fuck's the difference? Speaking of your nickname, are you surprised at how many headlines came out when you revealed what it actually meant? Like that seemed like a bigger deal than the trial. People are strange, man. They, you know, they whatever they think is interesting. A lot of times I don't, but uh, that, I mean that wasn't a secret. That wasn't like a, it made it was a big deal online. I thought it was Chuck Mosley. It, sometimes it is. <laughs> sometimes it is. Ronda well, Rousey is a good friend of yours. Have you imparted any? words that her about her, her wrestling transition? The only thing I've ever told her was to, to just have fun. I, I, I don't know what it's like back there in this current environment. 
I know she'd probably get treated differently, just as like I know I get probably treated differently here. Um, the only thing I ever told her was just, I know you probably got a lot of people telling you to do this, don't do this, and so just whatever you do when you go out there for WrestleMania, make sure you have fun. Period. Did you watch her? Did you watch her match at all? No, I did not. I saw uh, a couple of clips here and there. It's still, when I say it's hard for me to watch wrestling, it's not like a, an anxiety thing. It's not like a, oh, I, I can't do it. I, I literally I can't get through like eight seconds without being like, okay, um, I, can, I can't just have bored. I gotta I gotta watch something else. They got like, it's like going to a baseball game at, at City Field. It's, I like Wrigley Field. It's old school. Going to a baseball game at City Field, like a guy takes the ball four and they blow off fireworks and there's LED screens on everything. And like wrestling now is it's completely like that. There's LED screens everywhere and there's flashing lights and I feel like I'm going to have like a seizure. How about non-WWE wrestling? Uh, same thing. I just, there's just, I don't know. I don't know why subconsciously there's like a disconnect. Like I, 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 I see clips of stuff. Like I know Kenny Omega's the the, the hot guy, and, and uh, he's, he's probably one of the better guys in the world right now. But it's the same thing. Like I, I I'll watch clips of matches. I don't see myself watching like a full match. I just can't do it. You talk about being a fan of Last punk music. Is is it kind of the gloss of wrestling that has drawn you away from it? It's a little bit too glossy, too mainstream now. It's not not quite as cool as it was when you were trying it and getting into it when you were younger? I mean, I think it's definitely too glossy, but it's been like that for a very long time. You know, my, my jam was house shows before they started calling them live events, uh, where it was it was a curtain and a ring and a light above the ring. That was my that was my jam. That was that was my world. That was where I like to thrive. PWG? Um, PWG was different when I worked was a lot different. I think I might have had the worst PWG match of all time as well. I think that might actually be a statistic. <laughs> How do you Thank compare you. Last one, fighting at home? You know, you've been in ton, no, thousands of wrestling matches here in Chicago, and this is your first time fighting in Chicago. <laughs> How much does that mean to you? Because this is the first time you've done something new that's not wrestling. Yeah, I, I, I look forward to it. Uh, I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be challenging. It's going to be exciting. Um, there's good energy here with people from Chicago, you know, uh, I know not everybody's gonna, gonna like me, uh, I just love this city so damn much, you know, and it's, and it's the people in the city that has laid the foundation, uh, for me having success at any level at anything I've ever done, you know, I just, I just draw from this place and the people that live here and inhabit it, it's just, I don't know, it's just something about this place that I've always just been, you know, drawn to. I'm fortunate to come from here, and I will rep it until uh, I die. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you.